listening to an audio article by the Common Constitution. Today's article is entitled, Security Clearances Didn't Mean a Thing in the Obama Era. The other night on his radio show, Mark Levin made a great point about security clearances. For the past few days and well into the future, the left has and will continue to wail over John Brennan being stripped of his security clearance. All the hacks, including many Obama-era intelligence buffoons, who by sheer coincidence now work for CNN, the collusion news network, have tried to convince whomever they can just how essential it is for former intelligence officials to retain their clearances in order to be able to advise their successors. The left is treating the privilege of being granted access to top-secret material as some sort of right in perpetuity. But let's not discuss that it is the right and ultimate responsibility of the president to approve, vacate, or revoke clearances. Let's instead concentrate, as Mark suggests, on just what the former intelligence geniuses did when they were part of our government with full security clearances and unfettered access of all the worldwide intelligence at their disposal. Well, the first thing I see in taking one look at the records of these leftist political operators dressed up as intelligence experts is that the very thought that any current official would covet advice from any of them is utterly laughable. After all, what exactly did our intelligence people do with their security clearances when Eric Holder was running guns in the Fast and Furious scandal, resulting in untold murders? Does the name U.S. Border Patrol Agent Brian Terry still ring a bell? It should, as he was killed by a scumbag drug gang with Holder-supplied weapons. What did Obama intelligence experts do with their precious clearances when Lois Lerner's IRS was targeting conservative groups? What did they do when Obama insisted on deposing and allowing the murder of neutered bad guy Muammar Gaddafi, opting instead for total destabilization of Libya? This, of course, gave rise to Benghazi, the most dangerous place on the planet. What did these vaunted former intelligence experts do with their clearances to prevent or intervene in the attack and murder of U.S. Ambassador Chris Stevens and the heroes that attempted to protect him? And what did they do about Susan Rice going on national TV five separate times to lie about it? What did our accomplished intelligence officials do with their clearances regarding China stealing our technology and expanding their influence not only in Asia, but in this hemisphere. How did their clearances benefit us in the Iran nuclear deal, with $150 billion freed up for their radical Islamic regime to spend on global terrorism and run proxy wars in other country, transporting pallets of cash, no inspections without prior approval, and a path to ballistic and nuclear weapons? Did their clearances allow them to foresee what a disaster the Arab Spring would turn out to be by destabilizing the entire region? We on the right predicted it, but our clearance officials couldn't. How did we benefit from our intelligence apparatus when Hillary Clinton was violating every law on the books, when our government was illegally unmasking and outing American citizens, when Obama meddled in the Israeli election, or when Loretta Lynch met with Bill Clinton on the airport tarmac? How did these experts and their clearances help when a stable Egyptian government was ousted in favor of, pre of a president with ties to the Muslim Brotherhood? And finally, exactly what did our intelligentsia, with their clearances, do to prevent Russia from meddling in our elections? From just this list, which is hardly complete, one can only conclude that these Obama intelligence officials didn't deserve their clearances in the first place, much less affording them the honor of keeping any kind of clearance even a day after they left government service. Thank you for listening.